Hey guys, so today we'll be covering aggregator, how to use aggregator and when it is appropriate to use auto aggregator and manual aggregator, what exactly it is. Now I've covered a how to trade guide on Twitter with a trending analysis guide for multi time frame execution on Asteroids Belt. Um, there will be a bigger guide with breakdowns for mean reversion plays, playing the range within the belt, all of those things. But this guide on my Twitter pinned on my profile, so make sure you check that out. It's very important that you check that out. Um, covers how to use it for trending analysis and trending analysis the reason i've picked that one to start with is one is the easiest is the two is the one that everyone wants to use and three if you actually understand trending analysis it explains everything you need to know um you can use that to understand the mean reversion plays the the range plays within the belts and all those things uh, but the trending analysis was the, the best part to begin with and i hope it helps uh, a lot of people have given me positive feedback and that's not even the main guide when the main guide is done on my website you guys will have a full breakdown of exactly how to use the belts and I'm pretty sure a lot of you will make a lot more money. Um, although it's been significantly beneficial for a lot of you already, I hope the guide helps. So we're going to break down a lot of things today uh, just regarding the aggregator. So you know what, let me write them down. Um, so aggregator, auto aggregator, what is it? Uh, aggregator itself, so how to use it on manual, manual and time frames. Okay, so let's break this down. Auto aggregator. Please only use this if you are a beginner or if you are on the low time frame and flicking through a lot of charts. Why? The reason for this auto aggregator was made to be used for beginners when they're starting to understand how to use the belts. But for consistency's purpose, auto aggregator, please disable it. Now, auto aggregator is good. It does its jobs, especially on the low time frames, and you can check that yourself. A lot of people have tried it and they've made money with it. That's good for them. But for consistency, always use manual. And the easiest way to use manual is, okay, I know I'm looking at BTC today. Um, I feel like it's going to be the play. Go on BTC, turn off auto, tinker with the values. And I'll explain how to set on manual aggregator. The auto aggregator will sometimes change values midway through load. For example, if I loaded it today and auto aggregator was showing me, you know what, this is good short area. That's fine. This is the four hour, so I'm going to give you a four hour context. But if this was the, okay, you know what, let me say as if this is the five minute. Imagine this is the five minute, right? And I'm giving this, and also aggregator saying, this is where it wants me to short. I mean, quite clearly, right? Three months from now, or in, in the case of five minutes, three days from now, three weeks from now, auto aggregator may have told me to short here instead. And you might have shorted here and made money. And then you're looking back and you're like, why is it telling me a different value? Well, that's because auto aggregator is adjusting the belt programmatically so it's trying to figure out where the best place is and what time to use what aggregator and for that reason focus on using manual aggregator now you might be thinking that's not too big of a difference and i know i took my trade at a different time but when you're back testing things you're going to be confused when it changes and it's going to make it harder for you to learn how to use the belt now the belt's very easy to use and granted auto aggregator was made to be helpful for beginnings therefore it does work but as you go high time frame, it'll be less accurate because the code is still being adjusted for auto aggregator. On low time frame, it's perfect. It's it works pretty good. It's not perfect, but it works very well. On high time frames, it's less accurate. And if in the future you want to back test and you like, wait, what the fuck? Auto aggregator can cause you some problems. So what do we know about auto aggregator then? It's fine to use. But remember it will change value. So yes, this is the key takeaway. It's fine to use. You can use it. It's not that bad, but it's not recommended. For consistency, and as traders, we need consistency because if you're not consistent, you will never learn. Auto aggregator is just fine. When you're flicking through charts and you need to quickly have something loading, you don't want to constantly go into the coin and be like, okay, I want to use 10, I want to use 0.5, I want to use 0.1. Auto aggregator is fine. But if you really want to, shine with the belt use manual so what is manual aggregator how do you set manual two things you gotta remember with manual the coins price fluctuations matter and the time frame matters on manual if you are on 10 and the coin is valued at one for example xrp it's one 10 is 10 times bigger than xrp it will not work and I'll show you this as an example. Let's go to eight bucks and we're using 10. Let's put it up to 50. Look how inaccurate this is. 
Now it's giving you some levels because obviously the belt is still programmed to give you some levels, but it's clearly not what it's meant to do. To use aggregator on manual, what you should do is figure out one, what's the coin's price? Aggregator has to 100% be lower than that. Two, how much does the coin fluctuate on that time frame? The lower time frames can use lower aggregators just because they use less data when changing values. For example, if on the daily on the AVAX we can move $15, on the five minute we may move $1, $2, $3. We can use smaller aggregators because we're trying to break down price fluctuations to smaller values. But the reason you can't use small the five minute values on the four hours most of the time is because it's too much data for Pine. There's no reason for it not to work besides trading view limitations. And that makes sense. Trading view doesn't want you guys to have an indicator that takes 10 minutes to load and then you can trade. That's going to be bad for them because server rend rendering time and processing time and all that stuff. And two will be suckish for you because you guys don't want to wait five minutes for something to load. So for example, if on the four hour you can use 0.1 on AVAX, you can definitely use it on the five minute. But to make it more consistent, you might as well dial it down because a five minute has less price fluctuation. So you could dial it down and you can go to 0.05 and you'll see the belt would adjust a little bit. Just give it some time. You know, belt uses a lot of data. You see it adjusted and it gave you a little bit more accurate values as it moved up here. And the reason for this is because as I said, the price fluctuations matter the most. If the price is moving $1, your aggregator needs to be less than that. On the five minute bar, if the price is moving $1, go to 0.1. If that works, try 0.05. And the reason I'm saying trial and error is because I don't have a list for you guys to vary multiple different values with. Like then there's standard ones that I use like 10 for BTC on the five minute and on the four hour I'll go to like 15. So um, on, the, on the five minute I've got like 50, uh, four hour I've got like 15. That's because it's got greater price fluctuations. Now, another thing to remember is that the reason I'm saying trial and error is because on different coins, different time frames, different periods of life, let's say two years from now, the price will be significantly different. If 0.1 works for XRP today, 10 years from now, it might be too high because XRP is at zero, <laughs> or it might be too low because XRP somehow did the magical run to 300 and whatever, or 500 and whatever. Keep in mind that the value of price today, now for the most part, you could probably use 10 and 15 on BTC for like another few months. But if BTC somehow like, like 300k in three months for some reason, you're gonna have to adjust your aggregator. So trial and error. And how do you use the trial and error method? Well, so let's say you start with AVAX and you know AVAX is at 115. So I'm not gonna put aggregator higher than 115. And I know AVAX moves about $10 a, a day. So I'm not gonna put aggregator higher than $10. And I know I want a percentage of that $10. So I'm not gonna put AVAX at $5 because that's too large a percentage. I'm gonna go for a smaller percentage. I'm gonna go for one. That's how you start. And then you slowly dial it down lower and lower. So now you've seen, okay, cool. These belt levels roughly work. I'm gonna go slightly lower because one loaded quite quickly. If it loads too quickly, just know your aggregate is too high. It's as simple as that because the belt wants to use as much data as possible. So cool, 0.5 works. Let me go for 0.1. Now the only reason I'm saying this trial and error method is because for different kinds of different prices, and eventually, once you have your values done, you'll know what you want to use. For the most part, the belt doesn't adjust too much once it gets more data, it just adjusts a bit more. So if you're like 0.1 works, 0.5 works, you can stop there. Now, if you really wanted to be pragmatic about it, you can go to 0.05, but you can see that ad adjusted values are very minimal. So how to use aggregator? Two thing three things, time frame, price of coin, and adjust as you go lower. Now, once you get to a point, where the belt's barely moving, at that point you can leave it. Because all it's gonna do is increase your loading time and give you a slightly different level. And we're not trying to, although it does work quite often, we're not trying to catch exact bottoms. We're trying to go, okay, this is support. Deviation, reclaim, long. But that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to go, this is the exact bottom. This is the exact top. And we're not trying to do that. As long as the belt levels are relatively good, Going slightly lower won't make much of a difference. All it will do is increase your lo loading time and make things harder for you. So just remember, price matters, time frame matters, the percentage change of pr price matters. Those are the things that are most important.
Anyway, I hope that was helpful for you guys in your aggregator settings. It should be quite clear cut now. Auto aggregator, fine for low time frames, works pretty good. But for consistency, use manual. How to use it? Check the price. Go to a percentage of price. What else matters? Time frame. So a percentage of price based on the time frame. If it's the four hour and it's moving 50 bucks, you can go for one as an example. But if it's the five minute and it moves five bucks, go for 0.1. Anyway, hope that was helpful. See you guys next time. Ciao.